please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, Supplemental. Social media is often touted as a mistake. We here at the Halls of Injustice disagree with this. We find it easier to catch perps and convert more humans to eunuchs. You can consider it two things. One, us removing faulty humans from the gene pool and an act of charity. The reality is it's just a mask for no lives matter. Hello everyone, welcome to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmates number 184 to the ISO cubes. Inmates number 184's name is Lewis Edwards. Inmates number 184 is a moron from a highly privileged position within society. He has been all over the news in the United Kingdom because his crimes took place over social media. One particular platform in question that I actually forgot existed called Snapchat. There are other platforms that people like Lewis Edwards would frequent and I've covered them in shorts on the Halls of Injustice channel. Yes, I have a YouTube channel for all my crime content including shorts now. Go follow us there. Kick was one of the other more notable ones, not the streaming platform that some of the big reaction morons are going to that I play Assassin's Creed on on the weekends and don't grow very well, go follow me there as well. No, remove the C from the word Kick and it's that one instead, the messaging service instead. So what we're going to do is go through who Lewis Edwards is and why he holds such an esteemed or had held an esteemed position within society. To talk about the crimes he committed, I want to talk then about the platform in question and why he thought this would work, for him that is. I should preface this with a trigger warning, Lewis Edwards is a nonce. If you know what that word is, congratulations. If you don't, I will simplify it down to a taste for younger blood. So just who is inmates number 184, aka Lewis Edwards? Lewis Edwards is a 24 year old man who had served as a police officer for South Wales. Until the moment of his arrest, he had no previous convictions and had passed multiple police vetting procedures without any problems being picked up. Detective Superintendent Tracy Rankin of South Wales had actually said there were no flags. That is why what he had done is such a shock. When we identified it was him, he seemed like a regular guy. He lived with his mother and father in a semi-detached house in Bridge End, South Wales. He was often regarded as emotionally immature and had never been in a relationship with a woman of his age and suffered from low self-esteem. He was an avid collector of certain paraphernalia we'll get to soon via the dark net and used Bitcoin to acquire these things. So he did have an investment portfolio of sorts in cryptocurrency. Before he could be sacked for the crimes he was accused of, he had actually resigned from the force, a force he had not been with all that long. His crimes go back to before he had joined up until present, from 2019 to 2023. In truth, while there are many articles covering this, there isn't too much more to add on this subject. So we're gonna go straight into the crimes, which might be where many of you might not want to stick around. There's over a hundred crimes committed and they all involve children. On the 8th of February, 2023, the South Wales Police Online Investigation Team arrested Lewis Edwards and recovered heavily encrypted electronic devices alongside a manual on how to blackmail people. The police then gained access to these devices. The extent of his offending became evident. He had been in contact with 207 girls between February the 19th and February 2023. So up until the moment he was arrested, for four years he was committing crimes. The 210 victims aged between 10 and 16 years old. It is still believed, even though he is now in prison, there are many more that they have yet, the investigators that is, to identify. To trick his victims into sending explicit images, Lewis Edwards would use a profile picture of a teenage boy, claiming he was 16 years old. The young girls were then told by Lewis Edwards to take pictures of themselves in various stages of undress wearing only items, sometimes, of their school uniform and performing acts that were sexual. When they then tried to ignore his demands, he would threaten them and said he would share the images he already had or he would hurt their families. He then installed an application which allowed him to record images sent to him by the girls on Snapchat without their knowledge. We'll talk about that soon. In some of the recordings the police managed to get their hands on, he could be heard saying, I wish I could just watch these forever 
as he then watched sexual videos sent to him by a 13 year old. In another video, a girl who was audibly distressed and could be heard saying, do I have to and I feel forced. While on duty as a police officer, he would receive images at least 30 times. Among the victims were two sisters. The youngest sent images of her backside and breasts and a video of her performing a sexual act. To get them on site, he would show a vulnerable side as part of his character to make it seem like, well, it was a guilt trip. That's what he would do, essentially. He would find those that were vulnerable, some transferring to new schools who wanted to make new friends, and he would come across as the nice boy who liked me lots. Quote, the police began an investigation in 2022 when the force was made aware of suspicious online banking activity linked to the downloading of indecent images of children from the dark web. Officers linked an IP address to Edwards' address after his home was searched. Victims were identified through Snapchat usernames despite Edwards refusing to provide PIN codes to two of his devices. The police were trying to find an individual calling themselves Snap God. Part of an ongoing inquiry is actually an attempt to trace this distributor. What ties him into this is... He bought images of child, yeah that, using Bitcoin from SnapGod. The investigation into him included 15 police forces in England and Wales. If you're in the UK, this should go so far as to explain why there are so many victims and how they're spread so far. With this information, we need to talk about Snapchat quickly before we get to what he said when he was arrested and everything else afterwards. Snapchat is a social media platform that is primarily used to creating multimedia messages referred to as snaps. These consist of photos or short videos and can be edited to include filters, effects, text captions and drawings. You can do private DMs or semi-public stories or public stories. The DMs are quite important in this because when you take a screenshot of what someone sends you over Snapchat, it will instantly tell the person in the DM a screenshot was taken of something. I know this because I used to talk to other creators all the time and I would use the messages with consent in video form. In 2022, to keep up with other platforms also introducing this, they introduced a paid version of Snapchat to get more out of it essentially. You can store photos in a password protected area called My Eyes Only but Snapchat has incorporated limited use of end-to-end -end encryption, which it had planned to broaden in its use in the future. Snapchat, while in my head I thought it was dead, is still one of the most heavily used platforms daily. In 2021, it had 293 million daily active users, which was 23% growth over a year. On average, more than 4 billion snaps are sent each and every day. It is popular amongst younger generations, which does lead to privacy concerns from parents and governments, mine especially because my government is trying to push the online safety bill, something which I fundamentally disagree with. With what happens in the online space, Snapchat offences account for nearly half of online grooming crimes against children. This was recorded by the police last year. Data comes from the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. The figures showed a record 6,350 offences of sexual communication with a child, up 82% since 2017. And of those offences, Snapchat accounted for 45.5%. Now this is important, the online safety bill will just push more people to VPNs. If that happens, it then becomes even harder for the police to actually catch these people, which is why I fundamentally disagree with it. They can try and ban VPNs, but you can't actually stop anyone from getting a VPN, which is why I do not agree with the online safety bill in the slightest. It is easier to find these people when you do not have these hurdles in the way. Your legislation just pushes more people in a direction, one you cannot then touch. Snapchat were approached about this subject, about Lewis Edwards, and they had said that its safeguarding measures include not allowing public profiles for under 18s, using proactive technology to detect public accounts that try to market age inappropriate content, and employing 24 seven trust and safety teams who review reports and remove violating content. It also says its family center tool allow parents to limit the type of content their children can see. Many platforms have systems like this in place, but governments want to clamp down even harder to then monetarily harm the platform or punish them for what others do because those people slip through the cracks. Platforms of this size are never going to be able to keep on top of everything. Truly, they're not. But the online safety bill will not help bring these people to justice, those that commit the crimes that is like Lewis Edwards, any easier. He encrypted devices. 
Now imagine if you had it stored in some kind of cloud device buried behind many VPNs. You'd never find it. With this information, we're now going to go to what happened after he was arrested and his sentence. To our line of work that people search the internet to find indecent images of children, is, is, that, how, is that how you obtain this material? Do um, other means we know are like via the dark web, people access the dark web, is, is that how you go about obtaining this type of material? Other ways are people communicate online with like-minded individuals and they trade and they share indecent images and videos. Is, is that what you're doing? No problem. Another method might be to directly communicate with the child, whether that be using profile suggestion you're an adult or profile suggestion you yourself may be a child and then getting children to send material, what we would call first generation material to you. Is that how you obtain your images and your decent images? No that, that's quite important. I do wonder if the Daily Telegraph who have uploaded that video along with a number of news outlets are going to try and copyright claim that, even though it falls within fair use and of course public domain. Now as you saw in that interview I had to boost every response he gave because he just gave no comment to everything put before him. However, he did go on to plead guilty. He pled guilty to 162 offences at earlier hearings that happened in May and September of 2023. This would include 22 counts of blackmail and 138 counts of child sex offences and a further offence of refusing to disclose the password to a mobile phone and USB stick because he gave no comment and he refused to cooperate. For this, he was sentenced over a three-day period where he, much like Lucy Letby of old, refused to appear in court for this. The defendant, Lewis Edwards, has refused to attend court. He cannot be compelled to attend, either by the use of force or the threat of force. The only remedy is punishment for contempt and to continue in his absence. He was sentenced to life in prison, but there is a minimum tariff, and this is something I find quite frustrating. His minimum tariff is 12 years. He is 24 and he could be out when he's 36 years old. To me, his offences over a four year period show a level of manipulation, a level of extortion, blackmail, hatred, volatility, violence, from a position of trust and power. He has since, by the way, been barred from ever being a police officer again, of course. But he's used this position to take advantage of young people, underage people, and he will still be in the prime of his life when he is potentially released. That, to me, reeks of wrong. I think his minimum tariff should be removed, and he should just be given life. When one is a threat to children in the manner that Lewis Edwards is, they should not be permitted to ever re-enter society. It is going to take years for the South Wales Police Force to rebuild the trust of their community because of what he did. It's going to take longer for the victims of what he did to ever regain some sense of normality to their lives, many of whom have lost their innocence because of the crimes he committed. I'm sure many are going to ask why should he be allowed to even be given a chance at a future when they have lost so much of their youth. I can't answer that I'm afraid. It's not within my remit. Instead I'll tell you his sentence is life in this ISO cube and he's never leaving it.